Yeah, well, I'm a little uh, sunburned today, and the hair is like turning blonde practically, along with gray and blonde, whatever the hell it is. Uh, you know, I was down downtown to the firm, and um, you know, I was like riding with the roof down, right? But anyway, you know, that's the best time to work. You get more done on Sunday. You really do. But um, you know, I was looking at this situation in the Crimea with the vote. Now. Now, I obviously thought that, you know, the vote was going to go to, uh, you know, Russia because there's 58% of the population of Crimea is Russian. And they're also, you know, a little bit, you know, the deal was they were saying they might be impressed by the new uh, Ukrainian president. But I guess the other guy was impressing the Ukrainians, if you look at how much money, you know, he had. Because uh, that money didn't come from out of nowhere, you know. It didn't come from Russia. It came out of that country, too, right? Well, anyway, here's my point on the vote. And I says, here we go, man. <laughs> there had to be an angle because I figured it would be about 60% vote, which is a good good margin, but 95%? I said, something ain't right here. Something ain't right. Well, there is something wrong. It was actually the way the vote was put to the people. There was no option to say, we want to keep things the same. In other words, either you're going to get a hell of a lot more autonomous in the Crimea, which leaves them extremely vulnerable to, in other words, there was no option. In other words, it's like saying uh, the state of Delaware, <laughs> you know, is going to break off and here's your choice. Either you're going to go with the United States or you're going to be your own state, state and all the tanks and troops are in here right now, so if you're going to be, you know, you're not going to have it where the option three, which is the status quo, you're going to either go with the group, you know, with the big guy, with all the guns and all the tanks and all the soldiers there, or you're going to be independent. And the other option was, wasn't on the table. It should have been, there should have been another option there to say, let's keep things the same which was like Crimea had semi-autonomous rule and but they were still part of the Ukraine the options were different in other words you're gonna be a lot more autonomous which means you're gonna be vulnerable so you're gonna either have to pick Russia if you're a lot more autonomous you're gonna either have to say we're going with Ukraine to protect us or Russia so what the hell you think that freaking would choose you know as for those two choices those two choices were bad choice. In other words, there should have been the other choice, keep the status quo. That I find very interesting. Now you look at a whole bunch of tanks, tens of thousands of troops, uh, self-defense forces, you know, that are unmarked. And, you know, they didn't just come from the freaking bases. They Putin put them there. They have, don't have insignia. They don't have markings on their trucks. They don't have markings on the tanks or anything like that. So, you know, when you're going to vote, you're saying to yourself, wow, look at all this stuff. What, what, what choice do I have? <laughs> that influenced the vote a lot. So, you know, I was, something I picked up on that I don't think anybody else is saying. So, you know, if I put a video out, I'm not going to say, rah, 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 Putin, rah, 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 for freaking the West or whatever the hell it is. That's the angle, because that vote was really, really lopsided. And there's no such thing as somebody being, there's no such thing as everybody freaking pretty much says, oh yeah, we want to do this. Uh-uh, uh-uh, something was fishy. And it was the way the vote was put out, I'll just repeat that again. The choice was join Russia and X with Russia, that was the choice they picked. The other option was not to keep the status quo, but Crimea would be a lot more autonomous, really independent, independent. Which means that other choice was, in other words, Crimea would be very, very vulnerable. So it's almost like sticking a person on a life raft out in the ocean. You want to go with the ocean liner or you want to go with the life raft? So uh, what do you think they'd do? You know, I'd take the ocean liner, you know. The status quo was not allowed. That was not an option on a vote. That's why it was so lopsided. So this guy's there's a game going on here, man. Now the other thing is there's parts of Poland, parts of Poland, that are also, um, you know, they have more ethnic Russians, 
There's parts of Belarus that have more ethnic Russians. There's parts of Latvia that have more eth ethnic Russians. You know what I'm talking about? This shit's going to continue, man. I'm going to tell you right now, this guy Vladimir Putin is a neocon, the Russian version. You know, the alternative media says, oh, 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 the neocons are bad. The West, he's, he's the Russian version of an imperialist. He's got the same thing. And I'm going to tell you the real reason the major media treats, I'm going to put this insight out there because it's something people aren't doing, aren't putting out, nobody's putting out. There's a reason why the major media really treats Russia with kid gloves because the real powers, well, the real powers behind the scenes going back many decades have basically fostered communism, built up Russia. It's all part of a game to meld the East and the West together under one global government. So they're not going to be extremely, they can really bring out a real lot of dirt about the Putin administration a lot if they wanted to, but they don't. Because they don't want Americans in the West to get, they want everything to go combined together under one global hat. So they don't want to have it where people start getting nationalistic. Oh, oh, let's gonna, we got a problem here with Russia. They don't want that. So they kind of treat the situation with kid gloves. But the Russian leaders have another thought in mind. They're okay with globalism, but they want it on their terms. See, that's really what's going on. You got the West wants globalism and the East wants globalism, except one wants it on their terms and the other one wants it on the other one's terms. That's the difference. That's the only difference. And they're all working towards the same goal, but there's an intramural co intramural co uh, competition going on here. So that's why. But you know, if you really dig in with you know, I one of the biggest scams Putin puts out there is the Christianity thing. Oh boy, that is one of the biggest uh, scams going because, you know, I can't say like the guy is, um, <laughs> you know, for sure, you know, like guaranteed provable, but, um, you know, if you look back at the fall of the Soviet Union, every single communist instantly became a capitalist and all this type of stuff. They, more, more a lot of them embraced Christianity too. But if you look at Putin's father, that guy was a staunch atheist. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of other stories about it. I won't get into that because I have another video on that, basically. But the thing is, Putin's father was a staunch atheist. Putin went into the KGB. He was ruthless. His record in the KGB shows that he was very materialistic and ruthless. And all of a sudden, he's a Christian. Mm-hmm. Sure. Anyway, the only ones that are buying that bullshit is some people are just want to believe bull dreams or whatever it is about uh, I don't know I don't know there's a lot more I can get into it but anyway just the point on this video was that vote in the Crimea was not put to the people the way you really think it was put to them it was not put to them like do you want to keep things the same no that was not an option the options were go with Russia or get a lot more independent now, if you're looking at the option, get a lot more independent, how would you like to be uh, independent like on a life raft with practically no protection and you're surrounded by Russia and Ukraine and what do you do? You're not going to survive, are you? You're not going to survive. So what do you think? Why do you think they chose overwhelmingly to go with Russia? Because that other choice, keep things the same, was not on the table. That's a pretty shrewd maneuver. But uh, it's not being mentioned anywhere. But like I said, there's a Russian-speaking population in a lot of different areas of other countries, in sectors of Poland, of Belarus, Latvia. It's going to continue. Putin is an imperialist neocon. Different flavor, different flavor. So, uh, you know, my game is, I'm telling you right now, is if you want you really want to stop globalism, and uh, it's not just the East, not just the West that's on it, on to globalism. It's Putin is on for globalism, too. They just want it on their terms. Both options are bad, so you're going to have to be independent. So that's just how it is. We don't have too many options on the table. But that was the problem with the uh, Crimea vote. They did not have too many options on the table. <laughs> that's why it went so much that one way. 
but in, in any case, um, you know, you can always say like what's going to happen. It's it's not well. We'll see. We'll see what's going to happen down the road. But I do know I don't think Obama is going to do a damn thing because uh, he's a weak leader, and so is Kerry. And if God forbid the American people elect Hillary Clinton, I don't think she'll be a weak leader. But it's going to be a disaster. So we shall see. We shall see. But that's. Food for thought as to why the election actually went that way that much, that much. It shouldn't have. I expected it to go that way, but not 95%. But I realized why. The choices were uh, abominably rigged.